joined this afternoon from Dave uh, from Dimplex and uh, Martin from, uh, from Upenor. Dave, just uh, tell us a little bit about here, this, this retrofitting heat pump. What, about, what have we got here? Okay, what we have here, this is an uh, inverter-driven air source heat pump. So it's actually running at the moment. The people that can fill it, it's nice cool air coming through. It's taking the energy from the air from behind, passing it across uh, an evaporator where it's cooling the air down and throwing it out. Put it into the heat exchanger where we can take it to our heating system. It's very similar to every other air source heat pump. Uh, apart from the inverter. The inverter means that in the summer we're not wasting energy and that, say, a six kilowatt machine can ramp back so we're not wasting energy in the heating system at all. Now, as Dave's talking, you'll be able to see on the screen, uh, John, our camera man, is around the back there and just showing some of the, the features and close-up uh, of, of the machine as it works. Now, look, some people have told me these are three times more effective than boilers. Is that really true? Yeah, it can be. Obviously, in the winter, um, they're going to drop to around about 250% efficient. In the sum, they can be more. Uh, it depends on the ambient air temperatures. Uh, the new uh, MIS 3005, which is an installer uh, Bible, as it were, says that throughout the year, you must have a seasonal performance factor, or COP, of around 300%. And that is the minimum guidelines. Right, uh, um, okay. So look, why isn't everyone fitting them? They're not fitting them. They're not, they've not been very well publicised in the UK. They've, they've been uh, abroad for a very long time. Everyone really has one. It's exactly the same as a fridge freezer. So the technology works. Uh, historically, they've been quite expensive to install. Uh, with the um, RHI coming in now, we're finding this being publicised a lot more, which means people have access to them. At this point in time, really aimed at off-gas uh, circumstances. So, uh, if they've got an oil boiler, then we could replace that with this. Saying that, as the IHI kicks in, we're getting a like for a like with, uh, with gas boilers now as well. Now, look, you mentioned installation there, and I know something that's very dear to this man's heart is insulation. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you recommend is that, you know, appropriate insulation? As much as you can get in. Uh, as much as you can yeah, get in. Th I don't think there's any such thing as too much insulation. At least 250 mil in, in the uh, loft space. Cavity wall insulation, if you can, or internal or external insulation, and even floor insulation. The more insulation you can get with one of these systems, the lower the flow temperature can be. The lower the flow temperature means the more efficient the system will run. You'd agree with him on that? I certainly would, yeah. Right, okay, thank you. Now, that's lucky. <laughs> uh, what about the siting of these? Are there any regulations concerning the siting and where you can put them? There are. We've made it very easy. If, if you follow the manufacturer's instructions, it's all in there. Uh, we've got permitted um, development rights now for installing them in, into your home, into your garden. We've got to be careful that the, the air coming away from here is nice and cool. So imagine if it's winter time, then it's going to be very icy air. We don't want that blowing onto public highways. Can I say parts. it's all right for you at the moment? I'm standing it's by lovely. the heat. You've got the cool air. <laughs> right, okay, but during the winter, you say... Exactly. It, it can freeze the ground. So you've got to, you've got to be very careful where you site them. The key thing is training. Uh, you must have a, a registered installer to, to install this. Uh, if not, it's going to be fitted wrong, basically. Okay, and what about noise? It's not very noisy at all. Uh, this one gives out around about 56 dBs at a meter away. That's sound power, direct sound power. That's roughly the same as um, a fridge freezer. Nothing much different to that. Okay. This is actually running now. It'll be running for the rest of the day. So if anybody wants to come up, they'll actually have to put their ear to the machine to hear it. Can I leave my existing heating system in place? Uh, there's a lot of similarities. The main flow and return pipe is 22 mil for the heating circuit is fine. However, from the heat pump to the buffer tank, we always maintain you should install a buffer tank. We do recommend at least 28 mil, uh, depending on the pipe run, of course, but our design engineers couldn't work that out for you free of charge. After the buffer tank, then like I say, 22 mil flow and returns with 15 mil towels is ideal. And what are the heat uh, emission options. What have we got? The emitter options, I should say. Okay. This will work with any water-based heater matter. Uh, is it emitter, sorry, not matter. <laughs> it's getting late in the day, everybody. Um, what we've got here, we're running the Upnor underfloor heat rig, which we're going to talk about later on. It's running two conventional radiators and also a smart rad. Um, these are running all the time, and you can feel definite difference <laughs> of output between one radiator and the other. Uh, and that will bring me onto the smart rad, unfortunately. I'm not here to sell, but this is a fantastic machine. This will give out the same amount of power as a conventional radiator, three times its size. It will warm a room in less than a minute if it's sized correctly, uh, and it has very, very low running costs, which means we can run it at the same temperature as underfloor heating. So it's a brilliant alternative to underfloor, 
but it can also work with underfloor, so you can have one flow temperature at the most efficient running temperature for the heat pump. Brilliant. I'm going to switch much. over to our friend Martin here. Now, Martin, so we've talked about the options available. Specifically here, we're looking at underfloor. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about the system we've got here. Okay, Dave. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. We've got a very small area of underfloor heating here with a manifold located in the corner with some underfloor heating circuits on a traditional new build application. You'll find most of the installations on underfloor heating is where the pipe is buried within the concrete screed floor. Um, Dave mentioned it earlier, and we have, we have a big influence on insulation being critical in the performance of underfloor heating. So it's very important that insulation is within the floor construction. And in this case, we've just fixed the pipework down to the insulation using a staple, and then we've connected those circuits back to the uh, manifold hiding in the corner, and Dave's heat pump is heating the water that's passing through the circuits. Presumably there are some types of floor that are better than others, I guess. Yes, if we look at construction then, to start with, a screeded floor will always be the best floor construction. However, floor coverings are the, probably the area that over, have a massive influence over the performance of underfloor heating. Um, a tile, slate or stone floor will always be your best floor covering. Um, you can have carpet and you can have timber. If we go back to carpets, you must look at TOG ratings, thicknesses of carpets and underlay. So we're looking at one TOG maximum rating for underlay, 1.5 TOG maximum for carpet. Timbers must be suitable and acclimatized to the room before they're laid, and they really, ideally, you want to restrict the thickness of the timber. So probably 30 millimeters would be your top-end thickness of timber to work with. Now, presumably, uh, most of your installations are in new builds, I yes. guess. But what about the retrofit options? It is, Dave, yeah. And probably 95% of underfloor heating currently is around about a new build application because we bury the pipes as the construction of the property is going in. But there is a very small retrofit market out there. Um, and there are a couple of options with retrofitting. You have to go back to basics and still think about insulation, bringing your property up to the insulation value these days. But uh, it's what we commonly call overlay systems because... The existing floors are usually already down on the floor. So we're going to work from those floors upwards. And we're all about minimizing that heat, or minimizing that height, beg your pardon, on where we go. And there's a couple of real options through Upanor. We have a wooden uh, tract system, an overlay system that sits down over the top of the existing floor covering. It works with a small 12 millimeter PEX pipe. You lay this down, and over the top of this, you put your preferred uh, floor covering. Alternatively, and in good blue to Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier. Here's uh, an alternative. This is a polystyrene floating floor panel. It has an aluminium heat emission plate sitting on the top of it. And again, this is a low projection build-up height by about 15 millimeters plus your preferred floor covering. But uh, I can't stress enough the importance of insulation in the floor construction if you are retrofitting, Dave. Now, what about the controls for this system? How, how simple are those, John? I know you were looking a bit earlier. Perhaps we can get the camera focused back on the Yeah, the if, we, um, if we look at traditional radiator systems, people in the UK traditionally used to radiators. Maybe on that radiator, you have a thermostatic radiator valve to control the comfort level. Well, when we look at underfloor heating, we're looking at what we call zonal control. And all it means is a zone is typically a room that you control the temperature. And so we have thermostats in individual rooms. And those thermostats can be of three different disguises, really. You can have radio control, probably my favorite, this one here. You can have uh, low voltage systems or 230 volt. But we're looking for individual room control via thermostats. Now, I've noticed that the controller you've got in your hand there, and John, I don't know if you can uh, just hold that for John to have a look at there. It very conveniently fits with your wallpaper design. It does. But uh, a question on everyone's lips is, does it come in different colors? Yes, they are. Radio control option, you can get it in a standard white, as, as shown here. But also, it comes in a silver and a gray color alternatively. Just three ideal colors for this wallpaper. Now, look, at Upanor, you've got auto balance technology, which I know is unique to yourself. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. You know, we're all talking about energy efficiency at this show, and, and it is a key thing to get energy efficiency. And Upanor offer this auto balance technology, a unique painted technology in the underfloor world. Nobody else offers uh, auto balance. It's all about driving the energy to the rooms that need it on a requirement basis. And it's called auto balance technology, and it's, uh, it sends the water to the rooms on a, on a need basis. It looks at the performance and how the thermostats are reporting back in and what that room is doing to drive the energy where it's required. And you've got energy savings of up to 12% over traditional systems that you'll find every other manufacturer offers. So auto balance is a unique energy saving feature offered through Upanor. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.